Amendment number 28, printed in Part B of House Report number 118-30, offered by Mrs. Luna of Florida. Pursuant to House Resolution 260, the gentlewoman from Florida, Mrs. Luna, and a member opposed, each will control five minutes. The chair recognizes the gentlewoman from Florida. The 2020 Trump moratorium banned all energy leasing off the coast of Florida until 2032. President Trump recognized the natural beauty, tourism attractions, and unique wildlife, as well as one-of-a-kind military training and testing offered by Florida's coast. It goes without saying that energy development threatens all of that, especially off the coast of Florida, so I thank President Trump for his declaration. However, President Biden and Democrats in Congress undercut the Trump moratorium in the Inflation Reduction Act by allowing offshore wind development off the coast of Florida. This threatens our economy, ecosystem, military ready readiness, as well as a number of endangered species in ways that were obvious to all except Democrats who voted to force this wind development on an unwilling public. My amendment requires the GAO to conduct a study on how wind development would impact military readiness, marine life, tourism aspects, and prohibits offering leases for wind development until the study is complete. I have confidence that this study conducted by our government experts will show what President Trump so easily understood that wind is bad for Florida. My Florida Republican colleagues and I are committed to ensuring that no wind turbines will ever be placed off the coast of Florida. We will work with our colleagues on the Appropriations Committee to block funding for this kind of development, and we will repeal the section of the Inflation Reduction Act that my Democrat colleagues voted for that want to build windmills on our beaches. These very ugly and ineffective turbines pose untold dangers to Florida's thriving marine life and our precious natural resources. Wind turbines also threaten our nation's military readiness by interfering with radar detection, which can result in a complete loss of detection capabilities, according to the FAA and DOD report to Congress in 2016. In my district, turbines are harmful for an already endangered species in the area, and there is not to mention the untold effects of turbine that will be had on the tourism economy. People travel from all around the world to our pristine beaches, not to see windmills. I want to thank Chairman Westerman and Whip Emmer for working with the Florida delegation on this amendment. And be on behalf of the biggest, one of the biggest delegations in the country, I urge my colleagues to support this amendment and protect Florida from Joe Biden's windmill fantasy. Thank you. I yield my time. Gentlewoman. Reserve my time. Reserves. For what purpose does gentleman from Arizona seek recognition? Thank you, Madam Chair. I rise to claim time in opposition to this amendment. Gentlemen, gentlemen is recognized for Thank five you very minutes. much. Uh, the amendment stops any offshore wind lease sales in the waters around Florida until the Government Accountability Office publishes their report on the impacts of wind energy development on military readiness, the marine environment, and tourism. Uh, you know, I find the, the amendment somewhat ironic in, in that H.R. 1, the Polluters Over People Act, guts the National Environmental Policy Act, which is the best tool for thoroughly studying the impacts of major projects like offshore wind. A robust NEPA process will evaluate the potential impacts of offshore wind projects on military activities, fisheries, marine life, tourism, and coastal community. NEPA is the tool our government should use to help identify the best places for offshore wind and how to mitigate any potential impacts. Uh, NEPA, with, with all respect for GAO, a couple of page GAO study on the potential impacts of offshore wind doesn't make up for a thorough, robust NEPA review. A better, uh, and we need to make sure the coastal communities have the tools that NEPA offers to weigh in on projects that may affect their coastlines and their marine resources. Uh, and speaking of NEPA, uh, my colleague referenced that uh, project. Uh, I'm quoting from Political. Look at the energy projects that Republicans are citing as their poster child for the problem shed light, sheds light on where their push may or may not help speed project approvals. GOP lawmakers focused on delays to the Cardinal Hickory Creek transmission line during a legislative hearing last month, blaming the NEPA process for years of delay that would have stymied a 102-mile project, power project from Wisconsin to Iowa. Yet Republican proposed changes would not impact, quote unquote, the project, said Ron Pritchard, a spokesman for the Power Lines developer ITC Midwest. So NEPA, HR1 guts NEPA, begins dismantling it, weakens it, 
and uh, cuts the public out of the process. This amendment protects Florida and their coastline. Uh, there are other coastlines, there are other communities that don't want extraction, such as gas and oil. Uh, I mentioned California and states along the Atlantic, and uh, they should be extended, uh, and, and they fight every day to, to, to preserve those areas. I oppose the amendment, and I reserve the balance. Gentleman reserves. Gentlewoman from Florida is recognized. I yield my time to the gentleman from Arkansas. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I thank the gentlewoman for yielding, and I also thank her as a freshman member for her proactive work on the committee and Representative Luna's amendment requires the Comptroller General to have a report on all potential adverse effects of wind energy development in the eastern Gulf of Mexico, the South Atlantic, and the Straits of Florida planning areas. Until this report is published, the Secretary of the Interior is prohibited from publishing a notice or holding a lease sale for wind energy developments in the area. Uh, as she stated, the report must evaluate the potential impacts of wind energy development on military readiness and training activities on the marine environment and ecology and tourism, including the economic impacts on communities adjacent to the planning areas. We cannot compromise our military readiness and training activities, which are crucial for national security. By requiring a Comptroller General report, we can make informed decisions about the potential impacts of wind energy development on our national security, marine environment, and local economies. Therefore, I support this amendment and, and urge my colleagues to vote in favor of it. Thank you, and I yield back. Chairman Yields, Chairman from Arizona is recognized. Thank you very much, and uh, I continue to reserve. Gentleman reserves. Gentlewoman from Florida is recognized. I yield back. Gentlewoman yields. Gentleman from Arizona is recognized. Thank you. A frustrated former Republican official who worked for the White House Council on Environmental Quality also said regarding NEPA and HR1, we are spending 99% of our political capital on a set on a set of reforms that will, that will be of no statistical significant consequence, end quote. Yield back the balance. Chairman Yields, the question is on the amendment offered by a gentlewoman from Florida. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, no ayes have it. The amendment is agreed to. It is now in order to consider amendment number 29, printed in part B of House Report 118-30. For what purpose does the gentlewoman from Florida seek recognition? Madam Chair, I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment number 29, printed in part B of House Report number 118-30, offered by Mrs. Luna of Florida. Pursuant to House Resolution 260, the gentlewoman from Florida, Mrs. Luna, and a member opposed, each will control five minutes. The chair recognizes the gentlewoman from Florida. Major components of wind infrastructure are imported from our enemies like China. We have seen how poorly President Biden has handled the energy crisis, and to make it worse, he is outsourcing our energy to foreign adversaries. This threatens our national security, throws away American jobs and increases our dependence on foreign energy. Regardless of the energy source, we need to prioritize our domestic supply chain and support American energy independence. American energy should come from America, not China. U.S. materials, U.S. jobs, U.S. energy independence. I urge my colleagues to support this amendment. Thank you. I reserve my time. Gentlewoman reserves. For what purpose does gentleman from Arizona seek recognition? Thank you, Madam Chair. I ask for unanimous consent to claim the time in opposition. Without objection. Not, although I'm not opposed. Recognized for five minutes. Thank you. I support this amendment. I'm happy to support my colleagues, uh, my colleague on, on the other side of the aisle who seems to be taking an interest in supporting our homegrown clean energy economy. Growing a wind industry with domestic supply chains will help us create family sustaining good union jobs, support local economies, and help it fight the climate crisis. I, uh, I yield back the balance of my time and urge a yes. Gentleman yields. Gentlewoman is to recognized. The gentleman from, oh, sorry. I yield my time to the gentleman from Arkansas. 
Gentlewoman Eels, gentleman from Arkansas is recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair, and again, thank you to the gentlelady from Florida for yielding me time. I rise in support of this amendment. The renewable energy sector is a rapidly growing part of our nation's energy mix. We have seen positive growth in wind energy, and we hope to see it evolve into a subsector of American energy exports one day. To achieve this goal, we need to promote the development of a strong domestic supply chain for wind infrastructure. This amendment is a constructive step in that it the direction and express is the sense of Congress that we should develop our own domestic supply chains rather than import critical components from China. This amendment aims to prioritize the development of related ind industries through port upgrades, cable manufacturing, and hiring of vessels and crews for wind energy operations in the United States. By promoting domestic production and expanding our supply chain, we can create jobs, enhance our energy security, and strengthen our economy. Representative Luna's amendment will not only support our energy goals, but also promote economic prosperity. I support this amendment as this policy is a positive step towards the development of a strong and secure domestic supply chain for wind infrastructure. I also encourage my colleagues to support this amendment, and I yield back my time to the gentlelady from Florida. Thank you, gentlewoman from Florida is recognized. I yield my time. Gentlewoman Eels, the question is in the amendment offered by the gentlewoman from Florida. Those in favor say aye. Those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, ayes have it, and the amendment is agreed to. For what purpose, the gentleman from Arkansas seek recognition? Madam Chair, I move the committee do now rise. And is on the motion that the committee rise. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Accordingly, the committee rises. Madam Chair. Madam Speaker, the Committee of the Whole House on the State of the Union, having had under consideration H.R. 1, directs me to report that it has come to no resolution thereon. The Chair of the Committee of the Whole House on the State of the Union reports that the Committee has under consideration H.R. 1 and has come to no resolution thereon. For what purpose does the gentleman from Arkansas seek recognition? Madam Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that when the House adjourns today, it adjourn to meet at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Without objection. It Without objection, so ordered.